Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode of In The Club Presents At The Club. If you like what you see on the page and you haven't done so, please do consider dropping a like on the video, subscribing to the page and dinging the bell for notifications. At The Club is, of course, brought to you by Class For Kids. Class For Kids is an industry-leading booking and management software designed for kids' activity clubs. We work with 250,000 monthly users around the world to help them save time on admin and organise their business. If you'd like to learn more, click on the link in the description below. So on this week's episode, we have David Allen. David is a podcast producer. He is a university lecturer. He is a radio show host. So David speaks to us a little bit about every single one of those things. He talks to us about how to keep creative minds engaged through classes and how to structure those classes. And he talks to us a little bit about his journey along the way. Who is David Allen? I am a freelance podcast producer and contributor and I also work at the University of the West of Scotland uh, around the kind of radio and podcasting spaces there and I also do some lecturing as well and there are kind of audio modules, more the practical stuff on practical modules but um, yeah so that all kind of keeps me busy. Uh, in terms of podcasts, I uh, produce or co-produce a portrait in a podcast with a couple of um, friends and now colleagues, uh, Daryl Buchanan and Struan Candlish. Um, and basically it's what's on the tin. We get our guests to, um, we get some photos of our guests' portraits and that kind of stemmed out of Daryl and Struan want to take more portrait photos. Um, and then we have a wee interview, a chat with our guests about their inspirations, their kind of creative stuff. Um, we've had a lot of comedians on um, and a couple of actors and such like that as well. So it's it's a, a nice mix. We had Sanjeev Kohli on a wee while ago and we've got an episode with Mark Cox, whom you may know as Tam from Still Game. That'll be coming out very soon as well. So there's that. I also... Um, contribute to a Scottish history podcast as well called Scotland, a Scottish history podcast. You're going to see, you know, there's a bit of a theme here where I'm on podcasts <laughs> or I work on podcasts with really simple titles, but simple is best. Um, and then there, um, so that that's uh, that was short list. It was on the, I think it was the Sunday Times podcast list back in February last year, which is really neat. Um, and then I also co-produced the Uni's research podcast that basically takes academics work but also it but it explains it uh, to the layman so right. the, the the podcast host job is to actually kind of get the academic to talk about it and you know not without the academic jargon and such and it's a good way to kind of showcase the the, the research that the uni does you, you failed to mention a history of live radio broadcasting and um, you <laughs> You were yeah. on, um, you, well, you have to, to kind of go back onto that. You are, you're teaching on the course that I studied in, um, albeit you, you started teaching after I had left uni. That's how we know yeah. each other, um, through through a kind of almost crossover days at, at the UWS radio. So, you can yep. give us a wee bit of background on that on the David Allen show, yeah. So, a uh, funny story is I also did broadcast production, um many moons ago but uh, yeah so I started as the kind of radio tech guy and working with the radio team and then obviously that's how we met but um, David Allen show kind of started just after I became an undergrad um, I'd done a month on uh, this wee radio station that was based in air uh, called Air FM Again, there's that running theme of simple <laughs> names, simple <laughs> names Uh so that was that because I knew uh, like one of my good pals from school was actually on the organising committee for that. So um, we were only on there for a month because that's how long they had the licence for. But obviously there was a lot of other stuff that we had to do like um, because it was the majority of us hadn't really done anything, radio or audio or whatever. You know, there was a bit of training and stuff like that. And part of the remit was you take people from you know, lower income areas and support them to upskill. Um, and it, it was based in an area called Wallace Town. If you're familiar with air, it is one of the more lower income areas. I was just around the corner from the studio, so short commute for me it was great. Um, and we had stuff from like uh, South Asia Council and um, 
the the health the health board as well. So it kind of got us into you need to play this content or this kind of thing. So came to UWS with a bit of that. My second choice, first choice was journalism. Uh, dropped out after a semester. Broadcast production again, second choice. So um, yeah, started broadcasting. David Allen show myself, couple of pals, music and chat. Honestly. Did that for years, occasionally come back, keep on making a joke that I've had more comebacks than Phil Collins. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was that. Music radio is kind of my, my passion, my love for music. It's really how I kind of got interested in the radio side of things. But it's, it's funny, that podcasting to speech and interviews, it's a nice balance. Yeah, yeah. So how do you, <clears throat> how do you, like... When you're producing your podcast or when you're thinking about what sort of content you're creating, how do you come up, not necessarily how do you come up with your ideas, but how do you gauge what sort of content it is you want to produce? Do you like think of yourself as the audience member or do you kind of like take it from, is it is it passion driven or is it kind of like entertainment driven sort of thing? Because it can be, you can be very passionate about one thing, but nobody watches it or you can go for the viewers. What do you, what do you kind of... Well, there was always a joke that it was a David Allen show listener, singular. <laughs> um, uh, I would say a mix of both. Um, cause in terms of like the radio stuff and that, it was very much, uh, well, I always included like local unsigned artists in my playlists because I felt, well, these people, they need the, the promotions and stuff like that. And if I managed uh, to uh, get interviews with them, then obviously it was... I would go about, you know, researching them, you know, when did they start, that kind of thing. But I would also ask them, the, the as we would call the boring stuff, like, you know, who are you, where are you from, um, why are you a musician, that kind of thing. So there's there's a bit of that. Um, for the podcasts, um, the, the history one is kind of very much led by Michael, who is the, the sort of creator and the producer. He just feeds me lines that I need to read. Um, for portraying the podcast, a lot of it's kind of collaborative. It's really Daryl books the guests, but then we obviously have a conversation and well, what would we want to talk um, to our guests about? Um, what do we think people would want to hear from them? And we try and kind of... It's, it's funny, just through the... Obviously, like most things, you, you kind of get a rough idea of I want to ask these questions, but one of the things I find good... Um, both as someone who does podcasts and someone who teaches people on how to do podcasts, is that you always listen to what your guest is saying and then you ask follow-up questions about that because, sure, it might take you down a completely different avenue than the one you originally planned, but more often than not, you get some excellent content. Teaching people who... Who want to be there. Who want to be there right, and yeah. still keep it engaging so it meets their expectations. Is that a challenge? Yeah. It, it can be. Um, obviously now we're in the age where um, everyone's dual screening. Um, so it's funny, I was working on, so we're doing a schools outreach thing called the Foundation Academy at the uni. Um, and it's basically school kids do a module um, and then they can pick a subject area so obviously I'm working on the, the broadcast production one um, and they've been doing wee podcasts and uh, one of them actually did um, a, a wee kind of five minute, no actually no, it ended up being 15 minutes on how short form media is affecting people's ability to actually engage with stuff like films and that, um, which for like, they've just gone into sixth year. That's honestly like a, a fourth year kind of dissertation project. Yeah. Um, really impressed, they're a really good group but the the thing is though, like obviously you have to be kind of conscious of everyone's attention span is a lot shorter now and I guess that's one advantage of me teaching on practical modules is that you kind of talk at them for a wee bit and go, okay, this is this thing say we're, we're talking about here's how you use a Zoom recorder so you can go out and about and do interviews in the street, around the uni whatever um, I go into the bit of the nitty gritty and how they can use it, um, use it properly, that kind of thing. But then I'll go, okay, we'll take a wee break, and then you'll go out in groups and actually use it. So it, it's that way where they're taking the, they've just been talked at for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, 
uh, and then they're going to make it and they're going to kind of learn that information in two ways if that makes sense yeah and sort of take that information that they've learned and apply it because i've always found it being a more kind of practical guy is that i, I like to just kind of like use the stuff to actually learn how to use it oh if yeah that makes sense 100 percent. 100 i'm the exact same and see i, I, I just to talk about the younger kids and, and the younger generations coming up, I keep saying younger generations because I've realised what age I am over the past few months and it's horrified me. <laughs> same, but, um, same. <laughs> do you see, or has it even been since um, since my time at uni, um, with the, the kind of rise in podcasts and the rise in social media, do you get a lot of people coming through who want to do those kind of like voice pop type of podcasts that only last like the, for however long a TikTok video is able to be? Do you get some of that coming through or a lot of that coming through? We've had a couple of folk, we do generally, it's more on the kind of video side, the, the traditionally TV side of things where folk are wanting to do short and snappy stuff. Um, podcasting wise, um, I think they generally lean in more to the 15, 20, half an hour. Yeah. Uh, there was someone who once did a two hour one and it's like, geez, oh, God. that's a bit of a drag. <laughs> <laughs> So um yeah it's 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 funny is that even though we do have that uh, short snappy content a lot of people are still producing half an hour forty five minutes. There's a there's a, a new generation of traditionalists still still rolling through. Yeah. They're still yeah. The old guard are keeping strong, which yeah. is I suppose it's it's good because well a lot of the podcasts I listen to they're like forty five minutes ten hour minimum, um and they can go on in a, in a vast array of like different subjects and whatnot so it's as it's it's not i think there was a uh there's always been a consensus that podcasting uh, from from when i was at uni they were saying oh podcasting peaked with like serial and the kind of the explosion of the true crime but i don't necessarily think that's true anymore because when i was just sitting in class i was all right i cool i don't really care fine no bother and then it was oh no there was a kind of like peaks and troughs but it just it just seems to be podcasting with the event of like mixing that up with youtube podcasting and having people just sit down and like it, it can be just a switch on the recorders and go and then from the very fortunate people that conversation goes on forever and they be successful but uh, like the the lack of success of a lot of podcasts doesn't seem to be too detrimental to like the the, the willingness to try especially when like, people just coming up and coming through and you see that all the time teaching like people are seeing this for the very first time and they've got a very first fresh idea so it seems i don't even know where i'm going with this train of thought but it just seems to be interested to no, get your, your point of view on that yeah well that's one of the good things about the uni is that are even like extracurricular outside of their, their classes and such they're always encouraged just to make stuff so if they actually get an idea um and they they take it through a module and just you know, as a part of a submission then they might like that idea and go on to make a few more episodes so they basically treated the submission as a pilot and then they take it on from there they could do five ten whatever episodes and um, when they could do live radio broadcasts whatever and um, it, it's definitely a nice space to kind of nurture that that kind of thing so apparently 90 percent of podcasts don't get past episode three Oh, really? Uh, yeah. 90% quit after 20 episodes, uh, which is an interesting fact. But um, <clears throat> it's basically 21 episodes and you are in the top 1% of world's podcasts. So if you manage to hit episode 21, that's you. Um, you're in the top number one because everyone kind of quits so quickly. And maybe that's... Uh, part of the whole uh, I'm not seeing enough because a lot of people um, ourselves especially uh, in terms of like portraying a podcast we're sitting there watching the numbers and we're like yeah this isn't like the instant gratification yeah. of hundreds of thousands of listeners so we're obviously you know failing but at the same time you know we're, we're still going so I think we're actually in the top one percent now but um right. Yeah, it's it's a funny old it's a funny old game. I think some folk get put off by the whole. Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not getting a Spotify um, sponsorship. Yeah. So I remember um, listening to a podcast again again years ago 
when they were saying the only ingredient for success was persistence. Like, see, when nobody's watching, you hit it with the same intensity as as when like a hundred thousand people you get a hundred thousand downloads. It's just it's just show up every week and keep on doing it. Hail rain or shine, and and the and the, the the viewers will come or the listeners will come, and that's that's quite um that's quite a good like where you are right now. It's like a good testing ground because a lot of these podcasts that will fail, maybe it's somebody has got into something that they thought was more interesting than it than it ended up being, or they're kind of they're interested and it wavered. So university is a really good testing ground for you to think. How spend those years saying, oh no, I really like podcasting. But I don't know what it is I'm going to do, so I'm going to do these ones until I fail. Because I know that's what I did um, when I was like trying to be a filmmaker. Um, I was I'm just going to make all these horrible films until something sticks and I get to it because I know that's what the end goal is. But it's just taking the time, and I don't think I, I think that's what because I, I was going to drop out quite a few times when I was in uni when I was in the broadcast. I was like, this isn't for me. It's absolutely not the place. And then the flip switches, flip, I switch flips rather. Um, <laughs> keep that i'll keep that one in the switch flips until you realize oh no this is the exact reason that i'm supposed to be spending these years and this is the time to make the mistakes and it is that persistence of yeah i've got that dream of being a podcaster that will spend years three or four years doing terrible ones and then at the end of the journey it might just be all the, ing- the perfect storm happens and everything comes and everything clicks and you can go into the big wide world as a podcaster sort of thing or a content creator or for anything exactly yeah and it's also that way when you can say even though you might cringe at it a bit you've got this kind of portfolio of stuff that you've done to say well this is how i've kind of grown over these years to get to the stage where i am just now yeah can you share with all of our listeners slash viewers where can they find you on your socials where can they find your podcast where can they listen to you and check out your stuff uh so i am a uh, aka Allen on Instagram and it's uh, d.allen media uh, is, is sort of well it's actually a lot more photography a podcaster who does photography is crazy I know but these are this is the 21st century now but um, yeah so there's that it's also portrait in a podcast all one word on Instagram and TikTok and uh, obviously YouTube Spotify Apple Music the usuals um, Scotland is just a Scotland history podcast as well on the usual places as well. So go and check that out. But um, that should cover everything. Thanks very much to David for coming on the episode. It was fantastic to speak to him. If you liked what you heard and you haven't done so, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the page, ding the bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next episode.